So I was uh, on this on Facebook the other day, and there's this group that I'm part of, and it's like one of those um, Meyer Briggs, like it's the INTP group, and someone people just ask post questions about whatever they want to talk about, and someone wrote sex before marriage, like, I think it was supposed to be a joke because all of the, all of the comments under it were, no, like, that's horrible, you're gonna burn in hell, but, I mean, they were kidding. Like, no one was serious and no one, like, understood that there are legitimate reasons why maybe people shouldn't do that. I thought it was a joke and I thought the only reason was that people are superstitious and they're burning in hell and there's just absolutely no reason why that taboo existed. But if you actually dissect this, there there's a lot of reasons why it's a good idea. Um, I can just go down the list of reasons. So the first is um, I guess you have to take for granted that men and women aren't the same. They don't have the same psychology or the same needs, basically. And <clears throat> I think what women want is security because that's in their biological interest. If we're assuming that everyone's, everyone's, pretty much base instinct, and this is kind of how I think um, in general, is to reproduce themselves to be evolutionary successful, evolutionarily successful. So um, with women, they're going to be more su uh, successful if they have a provider for their offspring. So if that provider leaves, then their offspring are less likely to be successful. So basically women women want security and long-term commitment. And yes, of course there there's always exceptions to this, but that is like the basic psychology of women. Whereas I think men are more programmed to spread spread their seed because um, that, that way they have more chances of being successful. So <clears throat> I don't think women are programmed to go, go from one man to another like this. I think like that whole hookup culture and even going from one long-term relationship to another is psychologically damaging. And I think there's also been studies that show women, uh, the fewer sexual partners that women have, the less likely she is to get divorced and have um, a less successful marriage. So yeah, that's actually scientifically proven that, you know, there is a reason not to be um, promiscuous. Uh, the other thing about men is that they, um, in a monogamous situation, they're not um, going to be as attracted to a woman who they see as promiscuous because that way they can't uh, guarantee the paternity of the child. So the, the more sure they are that um, the woman is faithful to them and them only, the more uh, likely they are to invest resources in her, i.e. marriage. So I don't know, like all of this, all of this stuff with, you know, slut walks, like women going on slut walks and slut shaming and all of this stuff, like, People say, oh, that's just like an invention, a social construct, like women should be able to be free to, you know, go sleep with whoever they want or wear whatever they want. And it shouldn't matter, like it's really repressive. 
but if you if you really look at the biological <clears throat> reasoning behind a lot of this stuff, it actually makes a lot of sense. And the other thing about the whole slut slut shaming thing is that I think sometimes it's not it's not always men who are shaming women. A lot of the times it's women shaming other women because I think women are also programmed to have um, adverse reactions to women who they see as promiscuous because it's a threat to um, take their provider away from them. So a lot of the time with this slut shaming thing it's actually other women who are doing the shaming. So it's not necessarily a completely patriarchal thing. So I don't know, I mean just after trying to look at this reasonably, you know, I'm not invoking any religious arguments. Um, I'm not invoking a punishment except for a, a punishment that might happen now or in this life. But I think, you know, a lot of a lot of the reasoning behind the traditional morality and um, religious morality really does have a basis in in human nature and the way humans actually function. And it doesn't you know, it doesn't assume that we can be perfected. It kind of um, starts with, well this is this is the way we are and this is this is the best solution for this. This is the best solution we came up with. And there's a reason why it's it's found all over the world in all times and places. It's not just invented out of thin air. There's a lot of good reasoning behind it. So that's basically it. Thanks.